Hello and welcome to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales. Today I'm going to be looking at perspective, how to draw the eye in into a, a painting, how to draw the eye into a painting. I got a little bit of, of uh, cardboard there which I've just gessoed, it doesn't have to be any particular size, use whatever size canvas and that you want. This is just a scrap piece and as you know I just paint mainly for beginners and to teach um, my techniques as well and I just wanted to show her something to do with perspective today because I, I get a lot of questions um, and comments and things about that subject so I thought well let's let's do let's do a painting um, with this today. And thank you very much for watching that introduction. So, I got some ultramarine blue, there we go, some mid yellow, some mid red, I got some Prussian blue, I'll show you how to mix that in a second, Mars black and white. There we are. That's all we need. That's all we need. Actually, maybe I'll put a little bit of burn number um, on my palette. Let's get some burn number. There we go. Put some burn number on my palette. That's all we want. Sorted. Okay, so let's have a look at our canvas. Whatever canvas you want, whether it's portrait, that's that way. Our landscape is uh, that way. So just in case you need to know that. We're going to need some sort of an horizon line on this on this study painting that we're going to be doing today. And I thought we'd put an horizon line just down, just below halfway. So let's just put a little line like that. There we are. That's all we need is a guide. So what I was thinking of doing is an horizon is uh, a line that you'll see if you look at if you go to the coast or something like that and you see where the water meets the sea that's what they call an horizon line so we need a vanishing point basically a vanishing point is somewhere it starts off say there and then it disappears into that direction so let's let's just put a little line like that so as it comes towards us it gets wider and wider and wider a bit like train tracks if you look at if you look at train tracks train tracks do that don't they and as they come as they come closer these little things in the middle these um sleepers they call them get okay, wider and wider wider and it looks as if that's going way way into the distance like that and this is what we kind of try and get here so we, we need to bring in something like that maybe 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 let's just make that a little bit wider like that there we are. what i'm looking at is some sort of a, a road or something that goes into the distance there and we might have some trees and things just to make it easy i think i don't want to put buildings and stuff in we've done buildings before we've done like um a country cottage and stuff like that but i want to put some maybe trees or something in there because this this is this is a study of, of how we can get it to look like going into the distance i love making things up as i go along okay so let's get some white and let's just get a touch of blue and let's just get some more white in there than that let's just get straight onto the canvas straight onto the canvas Just, just put some blue in like this, and white. That's sky colour. Bit of ultramarine blue with it. Let me just turn my phone off because we don't want to be disturbed. There you go. I forget to turn my phone off sometimes, and people try to contact me and stuff. a bit of that down there now I've got taken the liberty of um, just adding um, some gesso and that to my canvas I am using a, a, a medium mix there uh, that's available at www.clive5art.co.uk that allows us to 
um, stop the underbinding of paint because acrylic has got a tendency of of flaking and peeling over time and because the bonds of the paint get compromised with water um, water and acrylic um, water in acrylic basically is um, just there to to thin your paints it's not an additive it's not a medium don't think of water as a medium it's not it's just there to, to thin your paints so the more you thin the paint um, the less um, cohesion it's got or the less it will stick to the surface that you're painting it on now gesso is a chalk based primer it can be made with different things like talcum powder and all this other type of stuff and flour people have used so many different things but in my experience the best thing to use is chalk and um, it's called calcium carbonate it's quite readily available on uh, on my website www.cry5art.co.uk or you can just buy it on ebay or something like that so it's readily available for you and you can make your own and all you need to do is mix some white paint something like a household emulsion paint which you use for painting the ceilings in your home you use some of that and um, use some boiled distilled water so boiled cooled water basically or distilled water the boiled water will do if you let it cool down add a little bit of that I'll show I can give you the full recipe for this uh, in the i cards there but um, you need a little bit of glue as well if you haven't got any proper um, acrylic medium or um, a resin acrylic resin uh, for this you can use like a PVA with just a polymer vinyl acetate um, or school glue or something like that you add some of that in as well um, and then you mix all that together with a little bit of chalk and basically you've got a you've got a gesso that's all a gesso is it's, it's, just, it's just put on the onto the canvas to allow the paint to grab to it that's all that's all its job is really and and, and it, it it seals the canvas in place as well so there we are we've put a bit of a sky in there now i want to light that a little bit more so i'm going to go in because that's dry already there you go so you never use your fingertips really because you get squeeze spots so always use a backy finger i recommend so just put a little bit more white in Using white can make things chalky, so be very careful when you're doing that. A little bit of moisture. I just want to make this look very misty down there. There you go. I want to bring in a little bit more blue down in this area. Just like that. Just fluff up your, your brush. Just develop some like shadows, maybe some distant trees or even something like that that, that could be showing through there like that. There you go. Let's just get some more blue in there. It's darkening that up a bit. So trimming blue is a lovely, lovely blue for this type of job. I love a trimming blue, I really do. And I'm just using one brush, a little bit of water. It's quite a, a long brush. Let's scrub it in, scrub it in, like that. There you go. Just have fun. Just have fun. A bit more blue. A bit more blue. shadows in there oh 
Boom. Okay, now, what we're going to try and do now is get a little bit of Prussian blue. Is that Prussian blue? That's not going to be Prussian blue. That's Mars black. What's that then? That's black as well. What have I done? I've actually picked up some. I've actually picked up some lamp black instead of Prussian blue. There we go. Okay, big mistake. Let's put some Prussian blue. I pick up paint pots right. because I put paint pots in, in certain places and <clears throat> forget where they are. <laughs> That's better. So let's just shoo. don't think about it, just do it. Don't think about it, just do it. There you go. Scrub them in. See what I'm doing? Can you see what I'm trying to do? I'm just putting the bones of things in place at the moment. So now I'm I, I need a script liney brush. Um, this is one of these long, thin, um, pointy brushes. There you go. Um, this is not my my favourite brush. This one. Um, I got another brush here somewhere, which is a little bit more. This goes to a sharper point. This one doesn't go to too too much of a sharp point, actually. Now I'm going to just put some leaves in, not leaves, um, branches and twigs and stuff like that. Just a few. See, it goes a bit thick sometimes. It's just a few little. Bits and pieces uh, like that. We could get a bit of white. We get a bit more of a grey colour. Go through the marks like that. There you go, that'll do. It's very quick, very quick and easy um, steady paint in. Now, I want to try and get this shape in there so I'm gonna get some yellow touch of red to it I'm gonna use some autumn colours And just all I'm using is red and yellow. You can use um, raw sienna or 
something like that if you wanted to. I, I want to go into these lovely colours. And maybe some distant bushes and things. I'm going to go over there now. I'm going to add a little bit more. A bit of white, a bit of yellow. Orange. Actually, I might get some more here. Now. Is in like that. Let's work on this road. Let's have a look at this road. So we need to bring in some definite shape to this road now. white about the shape of this roll can take. yellow to this blue and white it's got like a, a greeny color a bit more yellow to it I want a bit of I want a bit of green into this Don't work too hard. So I did a little bit of black and a bit of yellow. So we just darkened that down to a nice dark green colour. Trying to get some green in this as well. Just a couple of dips and dops and dops and dips. There you go. 
Let's do something mad. Let's do something mad. Let's get some burn and burn that. Ivory black. Let's just put in a tree like that. Whoosh. Put another big tree in. on the tip of the brush. I'm going to wipe on the tip of the brush and just, just get a little bit of light in there. Too much, too much, too much. Just spread that in. Darken that one edge up. It's always hard when you, you're trying to, to create something from your imagination. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't work. But I think what I'm going to do now is dry this off. <coughs> Not too much. There we are. So, so I'm going to pick up a, a script lining brush again. I've actually found my... My favourite strip lining brush. There we are. It is quite thin. So I'm just going to put in a few twiglets, bits and pieces. You've seen me doing this on other videos. There you go. Very, very quickly, just a few bits and pieces here and there and there, yeah, like this. Let's make it look like, you know, possibly this. Or could be a forest or something like that. And that's the, the, the road, or, or a dirt track even. That could be a dirt track. That could be a dirt track just going down through the forestry or something like that. Twiglets and all these little things in the background, and you know what it's like in the woods. There you go. What I'm going to do now is pick up a little brush. Um, what, what can we use? What can we use? We haven't used for a while. I've got, a, I've got a, a fan brush here. This is a, a brush that's basically fanned out like that. And um, these are quite good for trees and things. So I'm going to put some yellow there and a touch of black, smallest amount of black to it. I'm going to put in some. dark shapes there like that for now. need a lot to do a lot of detail really um, if you think about it as paintings are if you, if you go to museums and guard galleries and stuff like that you, you'll see that a lot of these paintings haven't got a lot of detail in them close up so the closer you go to a painting the less detailed it looks and then the further you go back from it and you're thinking wow that's 
you know, that's, that's, that's intense. That's quite clever, because um, they haven't painted a lot of, of detail in there. And, and this is what sometimes that we forget about today, is that you, you, you don't need... You don't need to put a lot of, of detail in the paintings like this in order to get the effect you were looking for. And especially with something like a forestry scene like this or something that, you know, all you're looking for really is a representation of what's there. You don't need to sit there for hours and hours putting detail and mega detail into it. And, um, and there's a lot of artists that don't do that because there's no need to because you're viewing paintings really um, from a distance. You're not you're not going up to them like this and going, oh, look at that. That's not very good, is it? You know, as you go up to a a, a Van Gogh or a Monet or a, a Thomas Gainsborough or or something like that or whatever your favourite artists are, you go you don't go up and go, hmm, not a lot of detail in that. And there isn't, in a lot of cases, there isn't. So don't be fooled by a lot of this photorealistic paintings. We don't need, we don't need to do photorealism. What we need to do is, is create believable paintings from a distance. It's all we need to do. And to create in things like depth and distance, um, is is the key really and you could do that quite nicely with just different tones and minor little brush strokes and things just to bring things to life a little bit more and that's all we're looking for in this painting is it's a study to how we can get a depth in the painting That's what I'm trying to do today is just create an illusion of of depth. It's an illusion rather than a painting then if you want. Let's get some more yellow over there. It's a lovely, lovely orangey type of colour. You know what we've seen. I just love messing around with paintings and just what happens if I just tap this down like that? What happens if I just tap that and then and then get a bit of yellow and I'm going to brighten that up with a bit of white. Well, so what's going to happen with that now? Is that going to lift the painting? Is that going to bring the painting forward a little bit more here in this section? Just need a bit of highlight there, and maybe a bit of highlight there. Maybe there's something missing here. Not knowing where one starts and the other one begins. That looks as if a road that lane, that lane is going into the distance. If we want to make it more of a lane, then we just get a little bit of moisture and we, we thin down some of our, our burnt umber. And this one, if we, what if we just darken that down with a little bit of a wash, like that. Get a little bit of tissue paper. And then just pull that off like that. And we could just increase that shadow there. Maybe, maybe we can get a little bit of black and stuff like that and put a few rocks and things in. There we are. Let's just get a little bit of white on top of those rocks just for a little highlight. 
like that. A bit more light down there maybe. There's another rock there. Get some leaves now. Just in front. Let's get some let's get some yellow. Some white. Let's just put some highlights sporadically around. It's a mixture of different things, really. Use your finger, glue some things in together like that. There you go. That's a nice little steady painting. I think it comes across as what I wanted it to come across as. Um, you you could play with that and really go on with it. If 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 you 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 could even if you wanted to. Get a palette knife and maybe put in a few lines like this. Just score in a few bits and pieces. There you go. It's it's something you could play with. Um, I'll go at trying to create some perspective in a painting and just play practice. So all I ask you to do um, on this lesson is is to practice and, and paint. If you don't do anything else today, paint. So thank you very much for joining me in the studio. Don't forget I upload every Monday at 7.30 if you haven't already. Please click the subscription button, that button down below. Over there is an, another um, lesson for you to have a look at. Don't forget to check the cards out. Don't forget to click the notification bells because I upload Monday at 7.30. So thank you very much. Bye.